One interesting aspect that I'd like to point out is the following: uh, What interpretation can we give to this product E transpose times I? This is nothing but in our particular case, uh, we sum over all the branches. What is this? Uh, let me write this out in full form. So this is nothing but E is a is a column vector. So E transpose is a row vector. Now how does that look? E one, E two, blah blah blah, all the way to E six. First of all, are we? Is this product legal? What is the size of E? Uh, e transpose 1 cross 6 i is 6 cross 1 so uh, the product is legal so that is simply this multiplied by xi1 all the way to i6 right and uh, so this is nothing but sigma over k e k i k what interpretation can we give uh, to this quantity it is the sum of all instantaneous powers being dissipated in the branches correct okay and uh, uh, intuitively what do you expect that to be if you take all the branches in a network right and compute sigma ek ik which is basically saying it is telling you each e k i k is simply the instantaneous power that is being dissipated in the kth branch correct and the summation is basically adding up all the powers in all the branches at any instant in time. So, what would you expect to see if you form this product uh, uh, sum over all branches e k i k you expect this to be 0 and uh, why does that make sense law of conservation of of power right remember power and energy are two different things power is an instantaneous quantity energy is an integral right energy is of course conserved but this is also telling you that energy is conserved at at every instant so nature does not for good reason believe in saying you know at this point in time you know you uh, you uh, you uh, take more energy than you generate you return it to me at a later time right because the nature has seen too many scams in the past right so it knows that uh, you know uh, you know you should neither be a borrower nor a lender right okay so at every time the uh, uh, you know, power is conserved right so the total power generated and total power dissipated in all the branches is is the same Okay, so let's see if that uh, is being uh, uh, predicted by uh, uh, our uh, KCL KVL equations, right? And uh, so, what is E transpose? It's simply V transpose A, and of course, this is I. All right. And uh, we know that this guy is 0. So, this must be the scalar 0. All right. Pardon? Where does n come in? No, it is this a. Okay, so uh, so this is simply saying. I mean, it, it may not be. Uh, uh, it's not uh, very surprising uh, that this is true, right? Uh, it's probably something that you expected anyway. Hmm? But what is surprising is uh, the following. So let's say we have one network like this. So, this is let us say a network that we have in Chennai
and somewhere deep in the jungles of Africa, right? You have somebody who is totally unknown to you set up another network with exactly the the same graph all right the only commonality between both these networks is that their skeletons are the same one could be linear one could be non linear one could be time invariant one the other could be time invariant uh, time variant it does not matter all that it ma all that uh, 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 we say is that these two networks are topologically identical right now of course kcl and kvl must be universally valid so a so what comment can we make about the incidence matrices of both these graphs of both these networks is the same so a times i is equal to 0 right and what is kvl here a transpose times v equals e all right and this is of course another network so apart from the incidence matrix being the same there is no other relationship between these two networks and this is basically let us call these branch currents i hat and therefore a times i hat equal to 0 and what comment can we make about uh, uh, this uh, kvl here so the branch volt current vector and the branch voltage vector and the node voltage vector here are i v and e here they are i hat v hat and e hat so what comment can we make about uh, A transpose times V hat equal to E hat. All right. Okay, and we know obviously that E transpose times I equal to zero. All right, and uh, of course E hat transpose times i transpose uh, times i hat must also be equal to 0. But let me show you an interesting thing and that is let us uh, try and form the product e transpose times i hat all right and what physical interpretation if any can we give to this uh, uh, to this to this quantity. What are the dimensions of uh, E transpose times I hat? It is a scale R and it is also got dimensions of power. The only difference between what we did here and what we are doing now is that to compute within quotes the branch power, we are taking the voltage in one branch and the current in in a network which is you know uh, thousands of miles away we do not know what that network is apart from the fact that we just know it is graph right. Now let us see what uh, 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 what happens when we do that right and that is E transpose is what it is V transpose times A and what is I, uh, uh, well this times I hat, okay. So what is this, uh, what is this equal to? And this is, oh well this is the 0 vector, 
So, what comment can you make about uh, this quantity? This is zero, right? Okay. So, this throws up the somewhat surprising. Uh, the fact that these two are zero is no is no surprise at all. Right? They have something that you physically expect. Okay. But what is uh, uh, is very surprising is the fact that you take the you find this within quotes some power like quantity where you multiply the voltages in in one branch, right? Uh, and uh, the current you take from a network which is completely unknown to you. The only thing that you know is that it is it uh, it has the same graph. Uh, surprisingly, it seems as if uh, uh, that is also equal to zero, right? We will take a look at the intuition behind why this uh, this is true. It is not as surprising as uh, 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 you might uh, at first think, right? Uh, at, uh, at first, you might think that, you know, how does the network know what current is flowing in the branch in some network that it does not even know, correct? And magically, all these products add to add to zero. Correct. So, uh, to show you why this makes uh, it's not as uh, surprising as it uh, one might seem, and uh, uh, you know, you might also think that oh well, you know, with this all this matrix stuff, there's no intuition, right? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it just turns out the math comes out to be, you know, if I do the math, or evidently the answer is zero, so it must be the truth. Right? But is there intuition behind this result? And this result is uh, is uh, a very important result, and this is what is called Telegon's theorem. Right? And uh, quite surprisingly, it was discovered uh, somewhat late, given that people have been working with circuits for a really long time. Uh, this uh, theorem came out sometime in the late 1950s, I think. Okay. You would have thought that somebody would have thought of this within quotes uh, obvious uh, observation uh, a long time ago, uh, but it is actually quite recent, hmm? uh, relatively speaking. Hmm?